went to Catholic school. So that's kind of where my first um, this experience that I remember with church was. Um, I got baptized when I was 11. I went through confirmation and all the things that you, you know, that you do within the Catholic church for that. I would call it a, you know, standard for the time kind of experience. You know, went every Sunday. Um, you know, if there was something going on Wednesday nights, you know, we were in the youth program. It was definitely part of life. Then I moved for college to NWA and I sort of church hopped. Um, I didn't and couldn't find a Catholic church that I loved. So I ended up in the Methodist church um, in Fayetteville for quite some time. And really, I would say throughout my college years, it was on and off. It was mainly Sundays. There was no real connection to the church we you know I went with friends or by myself when I moved to the Bentonville area I didn't really have a church Josh and I met we wanted to find a church together and again we, have, we sort of church hopped um, sort of looking for that right fit for between what we both grew up with and what we wanted I remember Josh coming home and saying Pastor Todd is in our BNI group and he has this really cool outlook on church and I think that we should you know give it some thought and I was kind of there. yep it really sparked my interest I've never heard of anything like that you know it didn't sound like any church that I knew of you know knew about you know, felt like it aligned with what I felt like church should be I think the simplest like way I can sum it up and like the example that I can give is you know I've always looked at these especially up here in Northwest Arkansas these mega churches these huge big buildings that you look at that and you say, man, how much money did it cost to build that? And, you know, if the church is really doing what it's supposed to be doing, how better could that money have been spent to have a positive impact on this world? You know, the vine is going to be about um, impact and, you know, changing people's lives and bringing people to the Lord and, you know, actually not just saying it, but the action behind it and doing it seems like a certain point in my life was like you know, the catalyst for certain events that things started happening that were that, that were a negative or that were a challenge and you know I, I feel like I you know faith carried carried me through a lot of that and, and stayed strong and but it's like it just kept coming it's like it's never stopped I think we had a, a sermon about that a few weeks ago about that you know sometimes when we think he's farthest he's closest and so I think for me right now my struggle is making sure I remember that he's close. You know there's been situations you know in the last few years that I feel like you know didn't really you know I stayed the course and, and you know I did what I was supposed to do and I prayed about it and you know I tried to seek God and I, you know, I felt led and I followed and you know it, just continue to spiral down and so that's you know and I think so much of that is reinforced by just the negative climate that we live in and have been for the last several years. This world is full of struggle not just mine or ours or our kids but you know finding making sure to, to remember that he is still here and that he's close by in those hard times. Uh, we have two girls Poppy is two and Caroline is ten Caroline is definitely more engaged and interested in the church aspect um, and the Bible, obviously, than Poppy is. I will say that Poppy has started to pray because we pray at dinner time, and now she will put her hands together and say, pray. It's great that the kids can be included in stuff like the flowers for mom and the donuts for dad, and you know, they go out there and hold the signs or they you know, do stuff like that, and that even small things like that show them that they can have a presence in the community and in people's lives. That's really the most important to me is that, you know, because I don't have all the answers, I don't have all this figured out, I mean, none of us do, but to make sure our kids had a place to go that um, they, that, en that engaged them and that they uh, were fulfilled. Just to talk about how connected in the community we want to be and how we want to sort of create a new outlook on church but not new in the sense of this is how it used to be and we need to get back to those things 
you know, at some point we started outsourcing all the things that the church was doing and we've outsourced them to all other types of agencies, government, school, you know, whatever it is. So I think if I was talking about the vine, I would talk about that we're trying to bring community in closer, trying to, to get back to some of those original ways that the church was viewed and some of the original um, purposes of a, of a church. It wasn't just church on Sunday. It was um, an all-encompassing safe net, you know, um, for anything that was going on. This, this is absolutely not what you're used to. And if you, you know, you just want to, go to church on Sunday and sing some songs and feel good about yourself, you know, that's really not, you know, it's not really what we're trying to do, but uh, if you want something deeper, you want something more, uh, and you want to be a part of something that, you know, to my knowledge, you know, is not being done, it's an opportunity to, you know, that you have, right?